Welcome back. On this episode of Landmarks Discovered, we'll be discussing Town Hall, which was built by Harvey and Clark in 1925. Harvey and Clark was responsible for many of the municipal buildings in Palm Beach and also in West Palm Beach. They were one of the preeminent architectural firms during the boom times of the 1920s. We can see many of their buildings not only in the Town Hall Historic District, where Town Hall is located, but also in the city of West Palm Beach. So the Buckley Building, which is actually located right across the street from Town Hall, was built in 1927. And we can see a lot of the detailing is similar between the two buildings and a lot of different cast stone ornamentation that really connects the buildings. We also know that Harvey and Clark designed many of the buildings in downtown West Palm Beach, including the Como building, which was the first skyscraper in the area. They also received commissions from the Seaboard Airline Company to build 50 of the train stations across the state of Florida. And we still have one of those train stations today, which is located on Tamarin Avenue in West Palm Beach. Henry S. Harvey graduated from the University of Pennsylvania in 1914. And in 1921, he formed an architectural partnership with L. Phillips Clark. And Katie, you found some interesting connections between Clark and the early pioneers of the town. L. Phillips Clark is part of the Clark family, and his father, Lewis Simple Clark, was an early pioneer of the town of Palm Beach. And he built Six South Lake Trail, which was where the charter was signed that incorporated the town of Palm Beach in 1911. And what's interesting about the incorporation of the town is that the first mayor was Captain E.N. Dimmick, and he actually was the developer of the Royal Park addition, which is where Town Hall is located. And at the time when he platted that area and started to develop it, the town hall was located on Main Street, which is known today as Royal Poinciana Way. And he made a very smart business move and decided to donate land for a new town hall in the Royal Park Edition, which would help stimulate the sales of nearby lots. And so that is how the town hall came to be located where it is today in the center of the road. There's this great quote from Henry Harvey that is really representative of just the incredible pace of development that was going on during the 1920s. And he actually recalls the exact date that he arrived in Palm Beach and talks about how just two days later they had their first commission. I think that quote from Harvey really speaks to the broader development pattern in the town of Palm Beach. I mean, there was such huge development in the 20s. And then there was this tragic 1928 hurricane that really took away a lot of that boom. And our forefathers really had the foresight to create the art jury after the 28 hurricane that regulated the development of the town to make sure that the design was in keeping with the character. 
Exactly. And the art jury is actually a precursor to today's architectural commission. And it's one of the things that sets Palm Beach apart from other municipalities, and especially in Florida, is that there is design review. And so there was a conscious effort to ensure quality building that was worthy of the Palm Beach brand. People look at our common landmarks as two separate entities, but really they complement each other. I mean, we look at the streetscape as a whole unit. And whether you have a landmark property or a non-landmark property, you're still going forth in the design review process. So it's really nice to have someone who can understand how houses relate to each other within a whole historical context, whether they are new construction or a landmark construction. And they are there to answer your questions about that process within the design review, which I think can be very complicated for people to understand. And we are fortunate to sit down with Laura Groves Van Ona, who is the new historic preservation planner for the town of Palm Beach, to hear a little bit more about how she serves those two boards and the residents of Palm Beach. I'm the first full-time historic preservation planner for the town of Palm Beach, and essentially what I do is serve the two design review commissions that the town of Palm Beach has, the Landmarks Preservation Commission and the Architectural Review Commission. Essentially every project that comes, um, that is being proposed um, on a property is subject to some kind of regulation and design review. And that design review either comes in the form of the Architectural Review Commission or the Landmarks Preservation Commission. The difference is um, the Landmarks Preservation Commission reviews properties that are formally designated as landmarks. And with that designation, they receive um, an extra level of protection whenever projects are being brought forward. You look on page nine of the original comprehensive plan for the town of Palm Beach. Page nine is titled The Plan, and on it, it says, a desire to preserve and to enhance the charming character of Palm Beach is the keynote of the plan. And essentially, I feel like that's what I'm here to do, to um, basically help preserve and enhance the character, the charming character that already exists in the town of Palm Beach. So preservation is about taking a moment of pause. It's about um, taking that moment of pause to briefly consider what is being proposed, how is it going to affect what's already existing, and um, you know how can we optimize what's being proposed so that it will enhance and not detract from the historic character of a property. Uh, places preserve you know whatever character they can that defines them. You might have heard before that preservation is about retaining a sense of place where you are. And I think, speaking specifically to Palm Beach, anyone who lives here, part of the reason they're living here is because Palm Beach gives them a feeling. And trying to define that feeling, it's made up of your surroundings, what you feel when you're here. And that part of that is the built environment. It's what's come before you that's establishing this place. And so I'm here to help retain as much of it as we can while enabling it to thrive as well. Really the evolution of Town Hall showcases how much the town of Palm Beach has grown since it was incorporated in 1911. In 1925 when Town Hall was built it was actually two buildings and it had a service yard that went through them and it really encompassed everything that a small town needed. It had the jail, the firehouse, the police station, a meeting hall that fit 350 people. But as the town grew, they realized that they really needed more municipal space within the town hall for offices, for meetings. And in 1967, uh, John Volk was brought in to close up that service yard and add in more space. I think that one of the things that's interesting is that from a preservation perspective, those original functions are preserved in how the building looks today. 
For instance, there is a door that was the entrance to the original jail, which is on the west elevation of the building, or west facade, and it's directly across the street from Earl E.T. Smith Preservation Park, which is a park that the Preservation Foundation uh, constructed in 1989 in honor of our first chairman, Earl E.T. Smith, who also served as the first full-time mayor of the town. And the fountain that's located in that park is an intentionally aligned with that doorway. So we see that doorway is preserved. And what's interesting is there are actually devils uh, around the doorway as, I guess, a sense of humor that that was the entrance to the jail. Another original feature of the of Town Hall that's been preserved are the garage doors to the former fire station. And we see those on the north elevation, which now fronts the park at Memorial Fountain. So speaking of the Preservation Foundation's influence in the Town Hall Historic District, in addition to Earl E.T. Smith Preservation Park, uh, the Preservation Foundation was actually instrumental in two restoration projects at Town Hall. So the 1988 campaign was really about the exterior of the building. And as you can imagine, um, at that time, there were a lot of windows boarded up because of the advent of air conditioning, and they really didn't know where to put the air conditioning units. So they kind of boarded up windows, put outdoor units places, and it was kind of looking very messy. So they really focused on the exterior in 1988, and the foundation raised around $600,000 to really bring the historical details back to life. The foundation's campaigns in 1988 and 2009 raised over a million dollars for town halls renovations. Next time on Landmarks Discovered, we'll feature Bethesda by the Sea, designed in 1925 by the architectural firm of Hiss and Weeks.